Well, yeah. But he's got to, it's, he's in the stage of this fight. He's got to land him. He can't take punches. He's got to land punches. And you have to be very impressed with Jane Finnick, watching him for the first time. Many of our fans at home. And very, very impressive coming out here to Australia. That's the bell. End of the round. And slowly slipping away here from Chad Bennett. And he is doing his right hand no good here at the moment. He is giving it a shake down on... Down on himself, too, for his performance. It is decision time for Hollywood. He's got a bit of the ring rust out of the system. Is that enough? That's right. You continue to hurt your hand. You risk further damage. More than You've got to close on him now. You've got to do it whether you want to or not. All right. Four. Six minutes of fight to go. You can handle that. You can handle that. In between the dances, we've got three minutes of boxing here. Box. From the state netball and hockey center in Melbourne, just five minutes north of the city. Chad Bennett, we fear our local fighter in the black trunks has a broken right hand. Been a lot of pain in between rounds, the last two corner stops. Been reluctant to throw the right. And even when he has, it has been of a tentative nature. Don't forget the 7th of March for the vacant WBA super middleweight title. On main event TV and Fox Sports pubs and clubs, it is Sam Solomon and Anthony the Man Mundine at the rematch. Mundine Solomon 2, March 7. And Andy, I've already put that on my uh, short list of fights of the year before it even happens. <laughs> and Chad Bennett showing his heart and his pride here. If that hand is broken to continue on against this opponent, Jane Fennec showed he's a very classy fighter. Got to be very impressed with his whole style. Got a quick right hand too. It's deceptive. And in the fact that he does hold... Good reach advantage right, over Chad. On, on, Makes it that Rick. much more difficult Rick for me. the Nova Castrian. Box. I just like his composure in the ring. and He gets himself into such great position, position to, to throw his, uh, his combinations. And he's just happy to, to wait for his opponent to unload and then he just fires back. Chad Bennett's corner is encouraging him, but it's, it's very hard for him if you've got a broken hand in there. Doubling up with the left hand and doing it very, very easily that time was Jang Fanak. Nice three punch combination. Yeah, good boxing. Good, sensible boxing. Not trying to load up too much on any one punch. We're not trying to go on with it too much. And he is dominating Chad Bennett at the moment. Under 30 seconds remaining round number five. Got to be a question mark over what Chad is doing out on, there at Rick, the moment as Rick, far as Rick, Rick, potentially Rick, Come on. Come making that hand injury worse. You would hate to see that being the case and continuing on. Sometimes any of the corner's got to make that tough decision because Chad Bennett's a proud man and you know, he wants to come out, he wants to win. Rick, that's no round five. See the pain on the face of Hollywood. Oh, 
Just being beaten to the jab and being beaten relatively easily at the moment. To that jab, to the first punch as Chad Bennett is experiencing a nightmare at the moment with what, again, we fear is a broken right hand. Is it worth going on, Chad Bennett? As Paul Upham said, he's a proud man. Sometimes it is up to the corner to make that decision. As popular as it might be with fans or even the fighter himself. We're admiring Jank for next boxing ability, but it, it's his footwork. I'm really impressed with his footwork. He gets into position so quickly. And then that hand speed that he's got, he is a really tough proposition. 31 years of age, Jank for next. Keeping in mind that Ty hasn't fought in almost a full calendar year as far as boxing goes anyway well, i'll be interested to see what his plans are for the future in boxing because he's a genuine talent yes and we can see here why tonight why he got so close to anton solopov split decision over 12 to solopov and if jane Fanning really wanted to pursue a boxing career uh, there's no doubt that he could go a long way Box. You just have to like his the tie's composure. He's just he's just so relaxed there. He's just trying to bait Chad Hollywood to bend in there. And then just counter it. He's just in really you have to say an incomplete control. Yeah, he is in complete control, Paul. Malcolm Bulner stepping in between the two, under 90 seconds remaining. Still two fights to come, Justin Clements and Daniel Porky Lovett. That is up next at a agreed catch weight. Our main event, of course, is at line heavyweight Paul Murdoch and Danny Green. For the winner, the likelihood of a shot at WBA light heavyweight champion of the world, Silvio Branco. Danny Green and his team were in contract negotiations and deep into contract negotiations for some time before sort of reached a stalemate and they decided, okay, now is not the time, but the 40-year-old Italian is in the sights of both Murdoch and Green. My information, Andy, is that the only reason the fight didn't happen was because the WBA said that Murdo uh, that Branco has to fight Stipe Drews, the man that Paul Briggs beat. Yep. And then uh, if Branco can win, Murdoch or Green are in line for a shot this year. Full credit to Chad Bennett, he's still trying in there. He's, he is having a lot an of enormous go. Well, yeah, we've got the tools that makes it hard. Two fighters embrace. It has been a tough 18 minutes for Chad Bennett. He has busted his right hand. I don't think there's any doubt about that. Big Mac Kennedy, Nutty Armstrong. Trying to console Bennett, who makes his way across the ring to see the boys from the red corner. Great sportsmanship once again. He is a tough hit, Chad Bennett, make no mistake about that, but that is a face of pain. He is hurting, and it's going to be a long trip back to Newcastle tomorrow. Hardy Armstrong, long-time coach and mentor. He is in the corner with him. One for one there from both <laughs> Chad Bennett and Mark Kroom and Jan Frenak. Really, there was no extension at all on any of the right hands of Chad Bennett. He was beaten and he knew it. Oh, they're taking the right glove off at the moment. Chad Bennett is almost in tears. Oh. Serious 
These guys are tough. Toughest individual pursuit in world sport. In my opinion, bar none. They lie the second and third. Dr. Peter Lewis, the long, long serving position of the kickboxing and boxing events down here in the southern capital. We're just waiting on the judges' scorecards at the moment, but our semi-main event and main event not too far away. We hope you're enjoying wherever you may be watching on this special presentation. Live from Melbourne State Centre. The card build lights out. Let's go, centre ring to a man that'll turn the lights on in any building, Howard Lee. <laughs> Thank you, Andy Raymond. Both fighters come to centering. How about applause oh, there for our tie fighter, James Bonac, and an injured Chad Bennett. Show some compassion, ladies and gentlemen, for a man who damaged his right hand early in the fight. We have a majority decision. Judge Andrew Campbell gave it 59-56. Brett McCormack, well, he had it 57 each of two. Final card, and Nick Williams cleared the dust. 60-54 with Ms. Williams card, your winner, majority points, Red Connor, Hakum Jan Connor. Majority points winner is our Thai visitor, Pakpum Zhang Fanak, and very disappointing for Chad Bennett, who has broken his hand, his right hand, in the contest, and was just not in a position to really challenge. Seriously challenge, anyway, a guy that is very, very talented. 